Alrighty, not much to say that I didn't say in the first one, so a quick thank you to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Cat Crab Lobster, Dark Machine, Estrella the Dreamer, Mesic, Feudic Yol, Casper Arnholtz, and Chaos to Mist. Thank you very much. Let's head straight into the story, shall we? You have been sentenced to death in magical court. Blah, blah, blah. Chapter 2 What is it? Screamed the elegant elf god, wreathed in flowers and glowing light, as he threw raw mana against the blinding white wall pressing towards them. A skull iron fell sorcery. The stout dwarf clad in mithril armor, inscribed with glowing runes, as he heaved his mighty axe above his head. He swung down with a mighty blow, the divine enchantments cleaving the very air, the very essence of the air, cleaving mana itself. The axe head disappeared into a glowing wall, leaving him with only the smoldering haft. Major no, the dwarf bellowed, his eyes glowing with despair and rage. I can't find them. The old orcish hair goddess cried out and waved to mother bones in front of her. The souls are gone. All of them gone. They must be trapped behind the wall. The elf god yelled, putting forth an ebon orb containing the trapped souls of minions. Yeah, that's not gonna work, her voice said behind them, followed by the munching noise. The trio turned to behold the naked Homo erectus, sitting in a lounge chair with a bowl of popcorn in his lap. Be gone, animal, the elf hissed. Behold the power of the mighty Elvaran. The orb cracked, glowing a hellish red hue, screaming with the voices of countless damned. A huge crimson bolt shot forth, wreathed in beautiful elven script, striking the glowing wall with the force of a hundred thousand thunderbolts. Oh, the hominid said, very pretty. I'm too bad I didn't do shit. The glowing wall advanced steadily as the naked hominid munched happily. It is devouring the entire overrealm. Is it? The hominid said, leaning forward. Yeah, these things kind of do that. Um, To be fair, I did warn you. The hominid juggled. I told you not to back with them. You did this. The orcish hair goddess shrieked, pointing her bony finger at the ape man. Release the souls of faith by wrath. No can do, bitch face, the hominid chuckled. Your precious souls are kind of... It would be difficult to explain to morons like you. A TLDR is, um, you aren't getting the Mac. From the side, anyway. The hominid grinned. You are, of course, welcome to go in there after them, if you want. He said, followed by another handful of popcorn. Don't be foolish. The god of elves said as the hag goddess had summoned demon after demon to push against the wall, each one lasting only moments before bursting into flame. The puny human god knows no magic. I never said that, the hominid said idly, picking at one of his feet. I just said that I didn't use it. The whole magic thing is kind of stupid. I mean, uh, I go through all the trouble of setting up this nice universe, and then I'm going to give just any mortal the ability to feck with it. No, thank you. If some mortal is going to feck up my universe, they need to be exceptional. Like one particular jerk that comes to mind, the glorious bastard. The hominid got up, moving his lawn chair back several yards, then sat back down. The cheap plastic webbing was starting to melt. Besides, everyone screwing with reality plays holy howl with the omniscience. What good is being able to predict the path of every single particle in the universe if trillions of jerks just keep wiggling them? It keeps you from foreseeing Jack, just like this. The hominid laughed. I do not use magic, so I was able to get a good seat for the show, he grinned. You totally missed it. It was really fucking cool. You can actually watch reality unravel in real time. I always love that. The dwarf god summoned a mighty hammer. Oh, hang on, the hominid said as he gripped the arms of the chair and kicked off with his feet, landing hundreds of meters away. The popcorn miraculously remaining in the bowl. Okay, he shouted from the distance. Let her rip. Dwarven glyphs swirled around Destiny's hammer as the dwarf god smote the ever-bouncing wall, triggering 
A massive explosion as the hammer detonated. Yeah, that's not gonna work either. I can't stop it, the elf guard shouted as he wove reality's shattering magics. I can only slow its advanced. It's so cute that you think that you're the one slowing it down. Their overrealm has lost, the elf guard yelled. We must save the celestial realm. No, the orc hag wailed. My souls. We must uh, say ourselves and our realm, the dwarf guard gasped as he struggled to his feet. His armor blackened, the glowing glyphs guttering out. Dude, that's some pitching armor. I thought you were dead. The elf guard, orc guard, and dwarf guard turned from the glowing wall and fled. The glowing wall spreading and advancing behind them, devouring everything in its path. Breathing them in scorching flames, almost, but not quite overtaking them. As the popcorn munching ape man laughed, his eyes faintly glowed. The three guards reached a glowing portal and ran through it, only to find the hominid sitting in his lawn chair on the other side. Be gone, ape, the elf god sneered. Join your worshippers as they all burn. Sure thing, chief, the naked hominid said, standing up and carefully folding his chair. Make haste, animal. The dwarf guard yelled, drawing yet another ornate axe. I'm moving, the hominid said as he ambled past. And put that down before I feck you with it. As the naked hominid, silhouetted by the unraveling reality behind him, walked through the gate, he extended a middle finger, snagging a wisp of celestial realm and dragging it through the portal with him, sticking it in his mouth. Nay, he can't close the portal, the elf guard cried in terror. How oh, uh, curious, the naked hominid said through clenched teeth. The wisp of the reality stuck between them. It's him, the orc hag screeched. He's cast a spell. I can see it, she screamed as her eyes glowed. Technically, the hominid grinned, his teeth still clench. I didn't, but uh, I'm not going to let that portal close. Sorry. Then you will die. The dwarf god bellowed as he charged. Bitch slap! The dwarf god was sent flying, bouncing off the edge of the portal and landing in a crumpled heap. The hominid sighed, walked over to the dwarf god's axe and picked it up. Now, um, what did I tell you that I was going to do with this? Spluttering with blood, the elf god and the hag goddess backed away in horror. I, I actually sort of regret doing that. The harmon had said as the blood covering him streamed in the searing heat of the hellish fireball drawing ever closer. I do really need to be more careful with my idle threats. He glanced down at the impaled dwarf guard, the bloody haft of his axe sticking out of his mouth. Yeah, the harmon had added. If either of you throws another spell at me, I will feck. No, oh, I won't feck you with anything, but you will suffer an unpleasant fate to be determined at the time of my annoyance. Okay, kids, the hominid smiled as he stepped forward and wrapped his arms around the necks of the two remaining cards. Let's go watch your world burn. As he dragged the pair through the portal, he glanced down at the dwarf god. Sorry, dude, the hominid said. I'd bring you two, but you're kind of gross. Uh, don't worry about it. I didn't want you to miss the show. I've slowed down time around you so that you'll be able to truly appreciate the rather unique experience that you have the privilege of enjoying. Later. As the naked man dragged the two remaining guards towards the portal, his fist shot out smashing the portal's wall and tearing a permanent hole between the two realms. What are you? The elven god gasped as a fireball spilled into the divine heaven. Oh, uh, nothing, the hominid chuckled. Just a filthy animal guard on the humans, that's all. Ooh, uh, that mountain over there will just give us a great view of your entire universe going away. Grabbing the two gods by the neck, he jumped, covering the vast distance in a moment. He released his two captives and set his folding lawn chair, which he always had, and sat, putting the bowl of popcorn, which he was also always holding, in his lap. Yeah, this is a nice spot. Um, you can really see the nice crystal palace over there vaporize nicely. He looked back at the elf. That's yours. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really seem like bitch face's style. The elf god looked at him, shaking. 
Just in case you're wondering, the hominid said as he put another handful of popcorn from the bottomless bowl in his mouth. I'm tossing both of you in that fireball when the show is over. Oh, look at all those little dudes trying to run, he snickered. The elf god drew a divinely sharp dagger, poisoned with the venom of the eternal worm, and plunged it into the hominid's back. Or tried to. The naked ape man idly waved his hand, and both of the elf god's fevers shattered. Now behave and let me enjoy this, the hominid said, not even bothering to look back. This is actually very rare, because I don't build crap, and I haven't gotten to see one grow from point zero in quite some time. If I have to look away once more, your last moments will go from extremely unpleasant to extremely unpleasant. We, we were just, j- just joked to you, the hand goddess whispered, tears forming in her bloodshot eyes. Yeah, pretty much. You could have stopped us whenever you wanted. Uh, yep. And you let this happen. Yeah, kind of a dick that way. To your own people, your worshippers. I have had a lot of worshippers, the hobbit had shrugged. They come, they go, and I don't need them like you, scrubs. I just like them. You could have saved them, she gasped in true horror, and denied them their moment of glory, the hominid had said actually looking back at the hag. What sort of monster do you take me for? The hag fell silent in uncomprehensible horror. The hominid cocked his head. Far in the distance, he heard weeping. Oh, there was plenty of weeping and screaming and a crap load of praying, but this was an entity. He missed one. Can't let that happen. He looked away from the glorious human expression of pure hate and rage. Um, he's gonna miss those jerks and looked down. Darting amongst the flames was a luminous woman with, um, deer features. You know, like a furry. He was really going to miss humans. They were hilarious. She was grabbing every animal she could, her robes of flame, and stuffing them inside her, weeping and crying out for help. Ah, oh, damn it, the hominid grumbled. He stood and waved his hand. The fireball stopped its advance, frozen in time. To quote a man of the hour... The hominid said as he turned to the two captives. It's been a lot of fun, but now playtime is over. Let's see. I know. The hominid's eyes flashed. You gods are eternal, right? Enjoy here forever. Quick question. Do you know what causally disconnected means? No. Ah, you like it. It's fun. The bare defeated gods disappeared. I uh, kind of regret that too. The hominid shrugged and put on a bathrobe. That was always draped over the back of the chair. Oh, the real woman cried out. My children, don't worry, she cried. It's okay, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. Actually, it is, a strange animal man dressed in thick robes said behind her. I know not what you are, she cried desperately. But please, if you have the power, please help save my children. I just happen to have the exact power, Marvin had smiled. Relax, toots. We have all the time we need. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you...